The international break may have just started, but there's still a ton of Liverpool news coming out of Anfield. In today's video, we have some massive Trent Alexander-Arnold news as a giant twist has emerged. Not only that, but we'll also discuss all of the latest news from the last 24 hours. There is so much to cover in today's video. But first guys, as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Jarrell Quansara signed a new long-term contract to Liverpool, as reported by LFC News earlier on yesterday. The 21-year-old has been rewarded with a new deal after breaking through 12 months at the club, establishing himself as a first-team player under Jurgen Klopp and now Arne Slot. Quanta only made his professional debut for the club last August, but ended last season as the first-choice partner to Virgil van Dijk, replacing Ibrahim Kanate in the process. Talks with Kanate are also underway, as reported on Monday morning. While the bigger news of the contract talks so far, van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold is that they have reached an impasse. Quanta's rise last season took many surprises, with the centre-back having spent the previous season on loan at League One side Bristol Rovers. Kwanzaa is an England youth international and received a call-up to the full England provisional squad for the Euros in the summer. So far this season, he has found himself behind Canate as Liverpool's right-sided centre-back, making one league start and another in the league club, but clearly he has a very long-term future at the club. After signing his new deal, Kwanzaa exclusively told Liverpool FC, I couldn't be happier at this minute. I think the way the new manager has come in, his coaching style has definitely been a massive part of that. And I think it is the best club in the world for me to develop at and become a better player. I think the players around me who I'm looking to work hard off and listen to, I think they're the best in the position at the minute. So like I said, there is probably no better place I could be. I just want to take each step as it comes, every training session as it comes. I just want to keep trying to get better on the training pitch, really, and as long as I stay tunnel vision to that. I just want to keep progressing, keep trying to learn, and keep trying to get better and better, trying to learn off all of the senior players, and I've got a lot in my position, so anything I can take from them, I'm trying to do day by day. I'm hoping to obviously push as well, hopefully we're breeding quite a good environment, that we're all challenging for places, as long as we're doing that, I think I'll become a better player and ultimately become a better team. In other contract news, reputable source Master in Spain have dropped a bombshell. They have reported that Real Madrid want to sign Trent Alexander-Arnold and will send a contract proposal in January if he doesn't renew with Liverpool. They see Trent Alexander-Arnold as more than just an offensive right-back, they also see him as an excellent midfielder. This adds to the twist that the contract situation at the moment has come to a pass. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but at this moment in time, we feel Liverpool are in the driving seat. But of course, with January approaching and no terms agreed, Real Madrid could persuade him to go. In other news, LFC men and women's teams will swap their regular front shirt logo for a future makers by Standard Charter design for their upcoming matches at Anfield, and fans will get a chance to bid on the signed match-worn shirts. Future Makers by Standard Chartered is the main club's partner global initiative which aims to empower undeserved young people around the world and teach them skills to improve their chances of getting a job or starting their own business. For the past five seasons, Liverpool has swapped its regular front of shirt logo for the Future Makers design and donated the match worn shirts for auction to raise awareness and funds for the programme. First, the women will wear Future Makers shirt on Sunday 13th of October when they face Manchester City at Anfield. Tickets are still available and priced at just £10 for adults. The men will wear the shirts on Sunday the 20th of October when they play Chelsea at Anfield. Following each respective match, the shirts will be signed by the players and go up for auction where fans can bid on their chance to win a piece of Reds history. The auctions will feature up to 11 signed match-worn shirts from both the men's and women's teams, plus additional match-issued and bench-worn shirts auctioned off for the fundraising platform Charity Stars. This year's campaign, titled Some Swaps Mean More, taps into players' ritual of shirt swapping. To support the campaign, LFC and Standard Chartered have created exclusive videos featuring men and women's players talking about swapping shirts, what it means to play in the Future Maker shirt and more. The shirt swap auction runs from the 13th of October from the women's shirts and the 20th of October for the men's shirt through to 11th of November. In other news, Manchester City and the Premier League have both claimed victory after the champions challenged the league's rules and commercial deals. City launched a legal action against the associated party transaction rules earlier this year on the grounds they were anti-competitive. The Premier League said on Monday afternoon City were unsuccessful in the majority of their challenge and that the tribunal and determined the APT rules were necessary and persuade a legitimate objective. The APT rules are designed to ensure commercial deals with entities linked to a club's owners are done for fair market value. 
CNT released a statement saying the tribunal had declared the APT rules unlawful and that the league had abused a dominant position under competition law. Both parties published the 175-page ruling from the arbitration panel. The Premier League said the tribunal had supported the legitimacy of the rules and found them essential to make the profitability and sustainability regulations effective, and agreed with the Premier League that if a transaction is evidently not at a fair market value, that would distort the competition within the league. The league also said the panel had rejected City's argument that the purpose of the rules was to discriminate against the clubs with ownership from Gulf region. The league said the panel found in favour of City in two respects only, that shareholder loans should not be excluded from the APT rules and that a limited number of amendments to the APT rules made earlier in the year would be necessary. Manchester City claimed the panel found the APT rules were structurally unfair and that the panel had to set aside specific decisions of the Premier League to restate the fair market value of two transactions entered into by the club. City said the panel had found the Premier League had reached those decisions in a productly unfair manner and said that there was unreasonable delay in the league's fair market value assessment of two of their sponsorship transactions. The club also suggested they look to seek damages based on the panel's decision. The Premier League concluded its release by saying that beyond the inclusion of the assessment of shareholder loans in its rules and the need to amend changes made to the rules earlier this year, its rulebook had been found compliant with competition and public law standards. Lastly, for Norwich, Liverpool loanee Katie Gordon came off the bench to score his first senior goal since January 2022, while Thiago watched Luke Chambers play for Wigan against Stockport. Including Giorgio Mahmoudashvili, there were 10 Liverpool loanees in action over the weekend. The highlight came at Carrow Road as Gordon scored his first senior goal since netting in the FA Cup for Liverpool against Shrewsbury in January 2022. It has been a long road back from injury for the 20-year-old who missed over 18 months due to adolescent musculoskeletal issues. He has finally now scored in the second senior goal, though coming off of the bench for lone club Norwich City as they thrashed Hull 4-0 in the championship. Elsewhere in the championship, Ben Doak played 65 minutes as Middlesbrough lost 2-1 to potential promotion rivals Watford. Another young Reds attacker, Lewis Coomas, had a quiet afternoon of his Stoke team, who drew 0-0 at Swansea. The 19-year-old came off after less than an hour. Nat Phillips had a more successful afternoon with Derby, beating QPR 2-0, though the defender only played 15 minutes, coming on for Marcus Harness to help see out their two-goal advantage. Owen Beck would normally be among those lonelies to be involved in the championship, but he was serving the final game of his three-match ban incurred due to his red card against Preston. In the third division, another left-back, Luke Chambers, travelled with Wigan to draw 0-0 with Stockport. For the match with Calvin Ramsey, Miss Liverpool's ex-midfielder, Thiago was in attendance as a guest of someone in the boardroom at Edgeley Park. One division lower, Reese Williams started for his seventh time in eight league games as Morecambe lost 2-1 to Macriton Stanley. Mahmoud Ashvili played on Friday night and kept his third clean sheet in his last four games as Valencia travelled to Madrid to play out a goalless draw against Legans. The worst result of the weekend came for Stefan Bishesic, who started as Pep Linder's rugby Salzburg lost 5 0 to Storm Graz in the Austrian Bundesliga. Liverpool fans, what do you make of the Trent Alexander Arnold contract situation? And do you think he was signed, or do you reckon he was signed for Real Madrid? Yes or no? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.